Hey guys, XB Walker here for your new and improved 2019 rifle and advanced rifle training tutorial. I am going to get started right away. As you can see, my guy is breathing very heavily because he's been running 100 miles to the Union shooting range. Devs, could we please get the shooting range closer for the Union? Anyway, I started the video this way because I want you to see what happens well you're gonna see a lot of stuff for this tutorial but what happens when your person is utterly exhausted when it comes to aiming okay so you can hear my guy breathing heavily he is now going to attempt to aim at the distant target which <laughs> is almost a joke it is very hard to do of course i didn't reload but you can see there is a ton of sway when you breathe heavily so uh first thing we want to do we want to start this video out by saying Avoid sprinting and running around everywhere like a jackrabbit. This is not Counter-Strike. This is War of Rights and It is a very realistic game as far as all the different environmental effects of the person you are now um, Let's get right down to it. We are recording of course at 254 in the afternoon on the server It's a little cloudy, but generally sunny which is a major improvement over last year's tutorial, which I got a lot of complaints about because I did it in the dark while it was raining and I was nailing a whole bunch of bullseyes from the distance. I thought that was pretty impressive, but it doesn't really help if you guys can't actually see where I'm shooting. <laughs> so we're doing a new improved one where we can actually see what the heck is going on. All right, so let's get started with the simple stuff. When you are using a rifle, generally most rifles, if you're aiming anywhere under 100 yards, which means the first three targets sets here, so set one, set two, set three, if you're aiming at any of these, you generally want to put the target right in the middle of the little sight that's sticking up. Not at the bottom, not at the top, but right in the middle. Can't see, I had it in the bottom. Sure enough, I shot a little bit high. So, you want to do that. Now, for distant shots, it becomes a little bit more complicated because it changes by weapon. But generally, as a general rule, you want to place the bottom of the target, or the person, if you're shooting at a person, at the very, very bottom of your sights, where you can barely see their head. Now, you might think you're aiming at their head, but at that distance, you are not aiming at their head. You're actually aiming for their center mass. So, let's go ahead, and we'll try the third set of targets, which... God, I hope I can hit, otherwise I'm making a very crappy tutorial here. Yes, I hit it. Thank God for that. Okay, so again, that was generally the middle of the site. It's only 69 yards. At that distance, you're still going to be fairly, I'd say, 90% accurate if you keep them in the middle of your sights. Now, it gets more complicated as we get to the distant target, which is 125 yards. The last tutorial, they hadn't actually put in measurements yet, so I had to guess at 125, and I'm happy to know that I was totally right. And I kind of also talked to one of the developers who confirmed that, so I guess that wasn't all me. All right, so we're gonna try for a distant shot, and I'm gonna be quiet while I do it so I can actually concentrate on what the heck I'm doing. Not bad. Not bad. That would probably have hit him in the head, which is good enough. In this game, every hit is a kill. Every hit. You could hit them on the big toe and it will kill them because, I mean, you know, God is just striking them down because they're going to get their legs sawed off anyway from an infection. So the game just kind of kills everybody with every hit for now. They might change that. I don't know. They might add in maiming or losing an arm, things like that. But as far as I know for now, every hit will kill you. Okay. Let's try one more to see if I get to hit lightning twice. Oh, 125 yards. Hit the bullseye. I still got it, ladies and gentlemen. Still got it. All right. Sorry. I, I actually did a video tutorial um, about 20 minutes ago, this exact video tutorial, and I was missing every shot because foolishly I had not practiced before I made the tutorial. So now I've practiced, I've got a little bit more in me, and I'm also using an 1861. In that one, I was using an Enfield, which is also a great one, but uh, tends to be a little less accurate at far distances. Okay, so here we are with our 1861. Now, before I get to the advanced rifleman training, which is to just show you some methods of helping your accuracy, I want to show you some, uh, some well, we'll call them... Um, sins of riflemen, 
sins of the shooter, things that will cause your accuracy to reduce. Now, the first one I actually already showed you. When I began the video, my guy was breathing heavily because I had run the 5K from our spawn over to here at the range. So sin number one, obviously sprinting. And that is already out of the way, so I don't have to waste your time talking about it. Now, now I'm not saying you can't sprint in this game. In fact, there's going to be many cases in which you will have to sprint to catch up. You'll have to sprint to charge. There's all sorts of things. But if you can avoid it, use quick time, which is to hit C. Uh, that is a slow walk, and that lets you actually aim while walking. Or hit C again for double quick, which is like your light trot. Qu uh, double quick is what you generally will be moving at with a unit. And this game is really cool in that if I take a 90 degree turn, my guy actually stops for a moment because in real life, you don't just turn 90 degrees and keep running the same speed. You're going to fall over on your side if you do that. So that's a really cool little realistic step that they put into the game that I love. Um, but anyway, you're going to want to move at quick time when at all possible. Sprint when you must, but don't otherwise. Okay, so sin number two, I will show you right now. And again, this isn't a sin in the sense that you shouldn't do it, because obviously you'll need bayonets if you're going to run into battle. But equipping a bayonet will actually hurt your aim time. So if I aim, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, there's about a one second window between five and six seconds that my gun is fairly accurate. Otherwise, it starts falling because it's heavy. Now, if I take the bayonet off, it's still roughly four to five seconds before I get it accurate, but there is about a three to four second window before the gun gets heavy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there it goes. Now it's starting to fall. Yep. All right. So about, uh, yeah, about a three or four second window in there before the gun begins to lose accuracy and you have to fight it more and more. So generally, you do not want to have your bayonet on unless your commanding officer says otherwise or unless in a common sense situation, you see there are a ton of rebels only 20 or 30 yards away and you're sure they, they are going to charge or you're going to charge. You're definitely going to want bayonets on then. Otherwise, keep it off if you want to be accurate, especially if you're in a unit that's perhaps a sharpshooter unit or you're using a sharps rifle and you're skirmishing on purpose. Using a bayonet is your last resort. You should try to stay away from the enemy unless ordered otherwise. So, of course, keep the bayonet off. One other thing, this isn't a sin so much as a tip to help you become more accurate, is, of course, crouching. Crouching will increase your accuracy. It also increases the time it takes for you to reload your weapon, as well as it penalizes your team if you die while crouching, even if you're next to a whole bunch of comrades, because you will take a skirmishing penalty. So only crouch if you're told to, or only crouch in the situations which obviously warrant it, such as hiding behind a stone wall. So here we go, we're crouching, and let's see if I really get lucky and can hit the target three times. Oh, uh, I guess I can count it. Showed up on the screen at least. But anyway, that is crouching, and you'll notice that when I aimed, the uh, gun steadied out very, very quickly, and it stayed steady for a while because much of the weight of the gun was not being held up by my biceps, or, well, not my biceps, <laughs> but uh, my digital biceps, my digital back and all that business. Okay, here we go. All right, let me, I'm going to show you... One more time. All right. Let's go ahead. One, two, three. There it's steady. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, man. It's almost 11 seconds in, roughly, that the gun really starts to fall. And even then, the fall isn't that bad. I can still pull it up and attempt to, well, I missed, but I can attempt to pull out a shot even 15, 20 seconds into holding it. Whereas when you're standing with the rifle, you've got a very small window to actually hit the target. All right, we're gonna try one more because I missed that one and now I'm ashamed of myself and I shouldn't call myself a YouTube trainer. So we're gonna try this one more time. We're gonna try to redeem ourselves. And if not, I'm going to shamefully move on to the next part of this training all the while feeling inadequate and not quite the man I am. 
Eh, well, that'll count it, I guess. We got the target on the screen, right? But another thing to show you since we're here is the reload time when crouching is obviously slower. It takes my guy quite a while longer to get everything done, and that should be kept in mind. All right, let's just reload. All right, there we go. Wow, what a difference, what a difference in time that makes when crouching. That, I should have actually timed it. Um, if I was smart, I would do that. All right, so here we go. We're going to go over to a couple drills that I personally do on my own time as well as drills I've done with units in the past. By the way, if you are the commander of a unit or the sergeant or whatever, and you would like me to show up to one of your drills and offer you guys a few pointers, um, help you out with drilling, doesn't matter if you're CSA or USA, I just enjoy the game and I'm happy to play with you and show you a couple things or maybe just drill with you because I like drilling, it's fun. All right, so first drill that I do was probably the, my favorite one and the one that's trained me the best at being accurate on the run is what I call sprint drills. Now these are not sprint drills like in football, American football, these are just sprint drills because I just made up the word and called it that. So what you do, and it's you can make up your own distance if you're on the CSA training course, but um, for the USA, what I do is I run, which means sprint, hold down shift, roughly to right here, turn around, take aim at the third set of targets, and give myself no more than three seconds to hit them. And I'll show you how that works. We'll actually count on the next one because I missed anyway. And uh, I'm standing up. You can see the reload time, of course, is much quicker. Okay, there we go. Get that bad boy in there. Get that cap on. All right. And let's just take it on down here. No need to sprint. We don't want to get winded after all. And we're going to turn around. Weapon is loaded. Here we go. Sprinting. Sorry if you can hear my keyboard clicks. It's a mechanical keyboard. I'm going to turn that around. One. Two, three, ah, much better. I feel good about myself. All right, so within three seconds, you have to hit. Don't cheat. I don't recommend that you try to cheat the system by counting to four or five. Just do it for three, and if you miss, do it again. If you miss, do it again and again and again until you get it right. Pretty soon, you will begin to learn the sway of the weapon. They do have sways in the game where it will always kind of sway in a pattern. So you'll get really, really good at at guessing at how the sway goes and aiming into the right place. Uh, I just broke my own rule by sprinting back to the start. Okay, so the next one is virtually identical to that, except it, in it also includes crouching. This is very important if you're in a skirmishing unit, a sharpshooter unit, some kind of unit that does detached fighting and doesn't generally do line fighting. So, same thing. We're going to sprint back about 15, 20 yards, turn around. We're going to crouch. Take aim, one, two, three. Not bad. And you'll also notice, as I said earlier, that, oh, actually, we're gonna break reload. Um, we'll reload standing up, takes too long crouching. But you'll notice that while crouching, your gun steadies out much, much quicker. So if you are being a Rambo, which you really shouldn't, but if you are and you want to get better accuracy while on the run, Turning and crouching is better. Besides, don't be afraid to crouch, if, especially if you're out of line, which you really shouldn't be, I should again emphasize. But if you are out of line, don't be afraid to crouch because you're going to lose the same amount of morale for your team. Anyway, you might as well try to improve your accuracy. So let's go ahead and we're going to do one more of these. And hopefully get two out of three here. Here we go. Sprinting back turning around, crouching, and you don't start counting to one, two, three. You don't start counting, ooh, not bad, until you actually have your gun sights up. You don't have to count from the moment you hit the right mouse button because it takes a certain amount of time to actually raise the weapon to your sight. Okay, so there we go. Um, one other thing that you should be aware of, and let me wait until my guy finishes reloading, which takes a long time while crouching, I should emphasize again, all right, there we go. Get that thing on there, buddy. You got it. Okay, the range finder sights or the increased range sights. We don't really ever use these in any situation. These are the ones where you press Z and it ups the sight so that you can fire at a farther distance. 
500 yard sight. So basically my guy is like a cannon. He's aiming his gun upward to hit that target. And he'll most certainly miss because it's not 500 yards away. It is just a little over 100. Why does he miss? Well, I just explained it, but never, ever, ever use those sights unless you are shooting at the absolute fringes of your computer's rendering capability. The game doesn't even really render out past 200 yards, and sights generally go 100, 200 to 500. So those, those uh, sight adjustments are almost never necessary. Virtually every case, I never, ever use them, and I've never been able to hit anything with those sights on. Uh, not bad, 150 yards without any special sights, see what I mean? Okay, well, this has gone much better than the previous one I recorded. Um, those of you who've already watched the previous one from last year, of course, you know I did it at night while it was raining. It's a beautiful, shiny, glorious, sunny day here on my virtual server that I own. Um, by the way, if any of you ever need to use it for drills, it's just called Drill Camp. You're welcome to hit me up on Steam if you want to use it for a private event. No, I won't rent it to you or make you pay money. I'll just let you use it. It's fine. And uh, anyway, this is XB Walker. You can add me on Steam if you want or don't. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this helps you a little bit. If you want some more tips, you're welcome to hit me up on Steam, either through the tutorial that this video will be posted on, through personal message, uh, you can send up a smoke signal, whatever, whatever works for you. And before we go, I'm going to attempt a bullseye. And I failed miserably. So clearly I am the expert at shooting and you should follow my tutorials to the letter. I will see you all in the next one and I hope this helped. See you guys.